Leonardo da Vinci is known for many things. Perhaps most intriguing are his many inventions, some that were centuries ahead of their time. In all his drawings, he visioned a lot of war machines, many which seemed a bit crazy. In particular, the specific design for what appears to be an attempt at a machine gun style crossbow device involving a wheel of 16 crossbows. It seems a bit dubious, crazy, and dangerous. In other words, a perfect project for us to try and recreate. So let's put his design to the test and see if this ancient weapon actually worked. In a previous video, I did exploration of the concept of the machine gun crossbow, a trope common in modern media of trying to make historical antiquated technology comparable to modern weapons. With that project, I recreated an ancient Chinese form of that weapon that had an actual limited use in combat. Surprisingly simple and effective, it still fell short of the rate of fire of an actual machine gun. After that project, I ended up diving into Leonardo da Vinci's drawings for a few other videos. But I discovered this obsession with the rapid-fire crossbow actually dates back further to even him and some of his 1485 drawings. His drawings are pretty crazy, and probably one of my favorite facts about da Vinci is that he's the original king of lying on your resume. After establishing a career in painting and sculpture, for which he is often still likely best known, he decided he wanted to be a military engineer, and wrote to the ruler in Milan a description of all the amazing war machines he could build, something he had never actually done before. The area where he already had established experience, he only briefly mentioned at the end. Likewise, in painting, I can do everything possible. For his machine gun crossbow, it's a pretty insane looking wheel of 16 crossbows set to all fire rapidly in a spinning motion. This is just too insane looking to not try and recreate myself, so let's give it a shot. But first, thank you to the sponsor of this video. Most of Da Vinci's drawings have some kind of notes written in his own somewhat cryptic mirrored writing. But despite being over 500 years ago, he wrote in what is very comparable to modern Italian, which would have made a mastery of that language very useful in my research. Unfortunately, I'm not fluent, but today's sponsor could potentially help you in that position. Unlock a world of possibilities with Babbel, the language app that stands out from the rest. In just three weeks, you can start learning to speak a new language with the help of Babbel. Their scientifically proven approach ensures you start speaking from day one, making language learning an exciting and achievable journey. They do offer over a dozen different languages to choose from. Real language teachers meticulously craft each lesson, ensuring you receive top-notch expert guidance. Say goodbye to generic content. Their lessons are tailored to real-world conversations. Babbel prepares you for practical, meaningful dialogues. It comes with a 20-day money-back guarantee. If you're not speaking confidently within three days, they'll refund you, no questions asked. Choose a subscription that fits your lifestyle. They have options for everyone. Ready to embark on a language adventure? Join Babbel today and make language learning an unforgettable experience. Click the link in the description to get 60% off and start learning today. The first step, we basically need to build 16 entirely functional crossbows. Similar to my other repeating crossbow, we're going to use bundled bamboo strips for the prod, which is a little bit more economical than trying to forge them out of steel. Next, the center spoke that all the crossbows connect to. Thank 
punch in there. Round hole, round peg. <laughs> <laughs> Lastly, the hooks to draw the bowstrings back and fire. All right, so we put together a little bit of a frame here to hold it. Should be able to start assembling it. So everything's gonna be on this axle. We have the big wheel here, cog. This is what all the crossbows will go into. On either side of that is gonna be basically the mounting point for the strings that cock the arrows. Cock, if that's the right term. So basically it'll go like this. These will be attached to the outer supports so they don't turn. A little bit of an arms manufacturing to make 16 of these, which kind of makes it a little absurd, I think, that so we have 16 basically working crossbows. But you could just get 16 people and shoot them at once. As it spins, rope attached to each of these will connect to the drawstring. And as it wraps around, it'll pull it back. And then I think the challenging part will be when it actually fires. I think there's just gonna be a lot of fine tuning. I don't think there's any way to like determine which which angle in the full wheel it'll actually fire. It'll be a little bit of trial and error of getting the right length and kind of triggers that'll push the hooks off so that they fire ideally pointed that way, not back at yourself. Da Vinci's drawings are a little vague, so it's not uh, super clear exactly how to do this, but hopefully we can figure it out as we put it together. As we did a little bit of a test fire with that to see how, how well this is gonna work. Some of the challenges though with this design though, is just getting it so it actually fires at the right time. And that's gonna depend basically on the rope, having it just the right amount of length so that when it gets to this point in the rotation, it's tight enough and it's reaching the wedges to let go. It took a lot of force to actually get it to release it, which is also kind of a pain. And just spinning it with just one was, took quite a bit of work. So there's some suspicion that if we put all 16 on here and we're trying to pull back a 45 pound bow on each of them, that is a lot of resistance um, that might not be practical to chew draw everything back. So I thought now is to go back to the more traditional uh, crossbow where it has a notch. And then basically you're gonna, we're gonna notch each and every one of these individually and then load it with the arrow, have that held on, and then basically have a triggering mechanism to push it out of the notch as it gets specifically pointing forward. Seems a lot easier to control the when it fires, which I think will be the main advantage. Puts less pressure on the whole device to crank 16 crossbows all at once. It does make it harder to reload, but I think even with the, if we got the other design to work, it would have been a pain to reload, get each of these hooks back on the bowstring and all adjusted correctly. So I think no matter what, this is gonna be a one-time fire thing. We fire run it once and then that's about it. make a nice team. <laughs> so we got that rigged with our, our new design of the triggering mechanism. We have two boards here on each side, and then we have a little metal trigger, basically, they'll go here. As it goes down, it'll push it up and release it from the notch and fire it. We're not really sure which way it's gonna fire. <laughs> There's a lot of uncertainty in there. So the arrows, have got uh, tennis balls on them, so we hopefully don't kill anybody. You try to minimize casualties by doing it indoors and targeting towards the wall here. And then Elliot's gonna catch it. Yeah, I'm gonna take all 16 of them. <laughs> <laughs> really lure it up. Not have any of them fire in our face. After that, then we can put in the actual bolts, see if it'll shoot. Alright, so we got it all armed up with all 16 crossbows, each with a cute little tennis ball on them. This is the most elaborate dog toy ever. <laughs> Alright, ready? Yeah.
Just straight up snapped it off there, huh? Yeah. They either were too thick or too thin. Too thin, then they fell out and left it rigged. And too thick, they ripped the whole thing off. <laughs> that might have been the problem there. All right, so I made a few tweaks here. Repaired the, the arm that broke. Kind of widened out some of our trigger mechanisms. That seems to be the main issue. And I think we can do a little bit better this time. All right, we are all loaded for round number two with some improvements. Hopefully this will work. I think we had a higher fire, right? Uh, yeah, we only just... Two of them, the trigger slipped out, and two of them, it just it didn't have enough to fire them. One, two, two? Three. Yeah. With a bit of tweaking, we're able to increase our fire rate to a little bit over almost 90% success. And I think we got some real good proof of concept that this design does actually work. Looking back at the footage and calculating its rate of fire, we were about 540 rounds per minute. And the only real thing that keeps the rate of fire that low and not any higher is just how fast you can spin the wheel. So if you get a little bit of momentum going, you're able to get an even higher rate of fire. Then the obvious issue is that no matter how fast you shoot it, it's only shooting 16 rounds. So it's definitely a pretty limiting factor, especially with the reload rate. For us, it, it took over eight minutes to reload it, although we were getting faster with each attempt. I think if we went back a little bit more to the original Da Vinci design with the actual hooks, pulling down each one, potentially you could make that still work at least as a separate loading step and pull back all the drawstrings at once. For ours, we we're averaging around 45 pound draw weight on each of these, so multiply that by 16, that's a lot of weight that has to be pulled. You probably have to reinforce a lot of us to actually pull that off. And ideally, to actually use this for a war machine, you probably want over 100 pounds. So that is a lot of force to pull back all at once. But you could potentially speed up the reload rate. However, you still have to manually place each bolt into it. There's no reloading mechanism. So even with some improvements, it's still going to be a pain to reload. So coming in at 540 rounds per minute actually puts it really comparable to the first machine gun, the Maxim, which your average rate of fire around 550. 50 to 600 rounds per minute. So this is right up there with actual machine gun rate of fire. So that's pretty impressive. So compared to my previous project of the Chinese repeating crossbow, that one had a, a much lower rate of fire. So in terms of getting a machine gun like crossbow, this is definitely succeeding a lot better. That one I think is a lot more practical though, because it's easier to reload. You know, a useful feature is you can actually aim it. This thing is uh, <laughs> kind of stationary. So there's definite advantages for that. And that's why it had some use in military, but overall, this device and that one never found wide scale use. And I think it's really evident just in building this when we realized that we made 16 fully functional crossbows. It would not be that difficult to just pick up 16 people to fire them, especially because a crossbow takes a lot less skill than say a bow and arrow. You can get a much faster rate of fire with just 16 people loading and reloading these. So in that regard, I wouldn't say this is really the most effective war machine. I think it definitely has an intimidation factor, which is probably a pretty big uh, motivator for actually building it. But nevertheless, it was really interesting to recreate one of Da Vinci's more interesting war machine designs. He has a lot more designs, some as crazy as this. So if you are interested in this type of content, I definitely would enjoy exploring this a little bit more in depth and trying out some of his other crazy designs. Thanks again for watching. Thanks again to all my supporters on Patreon. Without you, this wouldn't be possible. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to subscribe and check out other content we have covering a wide variety of topics. Also, if you've enjoyed these series, consider supporting us on Patreon. We are largely a fan-funded channel and depend on the support of our viewers in order to keep our series going. Thanks for watching.